Hey everyone, so I know there's been a request for a new uh, Hero Revival tutorial and um, I finally went back to my RPG because I haven't been in it for a while and um, I fixed it up and I pretty much used Blizzard's revive system that they used in the campaign where your guy kind of faints out um, but I had to make some modifications because um, I didn't really want your hero just sitting there and a lot of units that um, you may use for your heroes won't have uh, a fallen animation and you can't just play the death animation, it doesn't really work well, so... And some of them have don't have death animations, they have death model animations, which is just too complicated, so... Um, as you can see on the screen here, I'm just going to play a video of... Um, I recorded of my hero, my RPG, um, showing how the revive works. So, uh, as you can see, as he dies here, a um, little effect goes, he disappears, and it says a message. Your camera goes unlocked. Um, and then 20 seconds later he will appear at the spawn spot and your camera will pan back to him and um, you can continue playing. So yeah, you see that came back. And by the way, while he was disappeared, um, he w you, you still have this thing here that says he's incapacitated. However, it doesn't actually uh, select him or anything. It just, um, just kind of says it and I disable that and I'll show you how to do all that. Um, so now in the editor, if we go File New, um, you'll want to make sure that you make sure uh, what, uh, that your map has custom and that you add the standard and check off these two and press OK. Check the campaign ones off and press OK, I mean, um, because we do need the behavior that deals with hero death um, to use from Blizzard. And press OK, whatever, make a new map. I assume that most people will probably be doing this on a map they already have, but just make sure you have the campaign dependencies. Um, we don't do much mucking around in the data editor ourselves. Um, it's mostly we use the blizzard, the blizzard thing that's already there. Uh, okay, come on, let's go editor. Man, and when you add campaign dependencies, it adds a lot of time. Um, but anyways, the first thing we're going to do is go into the data editor. Um, well, let's actually just place a unit first. That'll be our hero. Um, and I'll set a global variable to him so that you can uh, simulate like it would be in your map with a hero. Um, okay, so let's just say our hero. I'm not going to actually place a hero unit. I'm just going to place a uh, a drone as our hero. And then for the enemy, just so you can see that the death works, I'm going to place some... Uh, some what are zerglings? I always got to use zerglings in my tutorials. Uh, Oh, I can't place them there. Press O. By the way, O shows these things. Um, I'm going to place them here. So they'll kill me pretty fast. And we also need to have a point now that I just remembered. Um, our point of respawn. So just put, I press P to go to points and then drop to point right here. And I'll just leave it as point zero zero one since it's the only point in our map. Um, so let's go to the data editor and find your unit, whatever it is. So in this case, it's drone for me. Um, in the units tab here, find drone, and then I believe it was drone. Let me just check. Uh, yeah, it's drone. Okay, and go to drone, and then double click on behavior, behaviors plus. Click the green X, and then in the drop down list, press V, and it's actually the first thing that comes up, which is Valerian O2A Hero Death Prevention. And um, this is going to take care of most of the stuff. However, uh, we do have to go to behaviors and modify some stuff. So go to the behaviors tab, search for Valer Ian, and then it's this one right here, Hero Death Prevention. And um, if you want to change the time that you you spend dead, you can modify these numbers. Um, you do have to be careful. I haven't touched them, so I'm not too sure, but this number is 1.5, and you can see there's a 1.5 difference between 18.5 and 20. So Got to make sure you modify the numbers properly. And I don't know too much about how this actually works, and that's not a big deal. I mean, it's somewhere in here. It's doing something something that we need. But the big thing that we need to do, um, because by default what it does is when incapacitated happens, it's going to apply the un unpowered animation to your hero. And for a lot of units, like in mine, I use the Dark Templar as a hero, and that unit doesn't have an unpowered uh, animation. So... Uh, instead of this, what we're going to do is change this to be a set opacity, there it is, and it's going to set the opacity to zero, so he's going to not be visible, and it's going to happen over one second. 
and this does actually, this actually doesn't look too bad. Um, it was the only solution I had, like I mentioned earlier, instead of doing uh, instead of playing a death animation, because the Dark Templar has a death animation, but I can't guarantee that every other hero that I give this this behavior of death to is going to have that death animation or whatever. So this solution is just a more general solution, and it actually looks pretty good. And then the other thing is instead of doing when when the hero comes back up, instead of removing the unpowered animation, instead we're just going to set the opacity back to uh, 1.0 and a blend in of 1 just because it looks nicer. So um, that's pretty much it for the data editor. You press OK. So just give all your heroes um, whatever heroes or units in your map you want to respawn you just give them that that Valerian thing here and then in triggers um, uh, let's go trigger editor um, we're going to make a death trigger to deal with moving your hero and hiding him and all that stuff. So it kind of simulates the old revive that I had in my old tutorial. So delete the melee stuff. Um, actually, you can just delete this whole trigger and go right click new trigger. Hero death, we'll call it. Um, you can type press F2 to rename instead of having to right click and go rename. Just so you guys know, or double, double click actually doesn't do it. But uh, So the event, we have to check every time um, a unit is attacked. Where is that? Um, yeah, leave that. And then we need a local variable, control W, um, dying hero. We just need to store it because if you have wait, wait actions in a trigger, um, you can't just re reference the triggering unit like you would normally. You need to store it um, because it loses that reference for some reason. I think memory gets cleared or something. Um, so we got that and let's go to the conditions. So what do we need to do? We need to check that the dying unit is a hero. And um, to do that, we go make a new condition, click on the unit category, and scroll down to unit classification check. So we need to check that the trigger unit is cloaked. Well, what we should do first is actually set dying hero, which is a unit type local variable, to be, click on no unit there, to be a function t triggering unit. So now we have this permanent reference to the dying unit. And um, if you can't see this thing here, sometimes it's blocked like that. So make sure you can just bring this thing up if no, if the no unit thing was hidden. Um, and then we can change this to just be no unit just for just to be safe. Uh, why does that keep closing? That's annoying. Um, so we check that it's a hero. Oh, no. I guess hero is not in this one. Ah, oh, darn. I picked the wrong one. It's got to be a uh, unit. Uh, unit. Where is it? Unit type classification check. There we go. Okay. Unit type of variable dying hero is hero equal to true. There we go. We've checked that it's a hero, and then we also need to check that it has the um, the the what's it called the the Valerian buff or whatever. So let's um, put the and condition. So I just control W to new and condition here, and I made a blank one and drag these both under the and, and then the second one here. Um, click left click on the bracket here, and change it to unit. Uh, unit has behavior. There we go. Oops, that's not what I want. Damn it. Uh, my clicking is sucking today. Uh, let's see. Unit. I found this earlier. Unit has behavior. There we go. So dying unit instead of triggering unit. Dying here, I mean. Has behavior. And now search for val and click on that one. And then uh, equals equals to true. And one thing that I need to do actually, because um, my unit is not a hero right now, is I need to find the drone and go down to attributes, make him heroic. And then on top of that, go to flags and make him a hero. So this will just make uh, make sure this, this, will, this will run through properly. So now the actions we want to do is we want to make that little like spirit 
when the when the hero died, you saw that little like spirit model animation blow out from within him. So um, that's all just custom stuff I put in myself to simulate like he's died. Um, because in the data editor, all we did was make him go invisible, which without any sort of explosion from his corpse or anything, it wouldn't look that good. So this this is what I'm going to show right now. Uh, so let's see. We're going to create a model, actor model at point value. Oops. Um, the model itself is going to be spirit death, Protoss spirit death um, at point, and the point is going to be point zero zero one. That's up to you what you want to do with that, whatever point you want in your map, um, and then control W, and then actor, send actor message, and then we're going to send the message to animation play death. It's already chosen, but if death wasn't there for you, you can click customize, type uh, type death into oops, types death into here. Press the green X, press OK, and then you can select death here. Animation properties, scroll down and make it uh, death. Flags, we don't need any. If you can't see the flags, it's because you have the thing too short. I don't know what all this gray space is supposed to be here for, but it's there. Um, and you can change the time scale if you want. Um, I'm just going to leave it. And then what we need to do actually is make another local variable um, just to store the actor. So let's just call this actor of type, not integer. We're going to make it actor. And then, oops. And then uh, going back to the send message thing, we need to actually send this to um, function last created actor by new. Okay. And then now let's go new action v set variable. We're going to set actor to equal function last created actor new. So now we, we, have a, we store this so that 16 seconds later, or 20 seconds later, I mean, when our hero, rev when our hero revives, we can remove this for sure. Um, or you could delay it by a shorter amount, but you just need to delay it longer than the animation lasts, and then we just need to <clears throat> remove it. Um, but I'll show that in a sec, if that didn't make sense. Um, so now we need to do some stuff to our unit because um, <clears throat> we don't want it to be highlightable or any of that stuff. So we need to set um, set unit state. S turn variable dying hero highlightable to off. Then we can copy paste and then we can turn off cursor so you don't mouse over him. Turn off um, selectable copy paste and turn off status bar. I know this is a lot but it's all just bookkeeping. Turn off tooltips and I think targetable we don't have to worry about because the behavior already takes care of that. Um, and then we also need to do another copy the send actor send message thing and paste it there and we need to send message um, let's see what do we need to send the message we need to send a message to hide the minimap so set minimap visibility just click it twice to make sure it's disabled. Set minimap visibly disabled to function actor from unit, actor for, and click on no unit and change it to dying hero. So now our hero is not any of these things and it's not visible in the minimap. So it's just completely invisible to the player. And then we need to check if um, general if then else. We need to check um, if you had him selected, we need to delete, deselect him. So if condition comparison click on the left bracket um, if uh, unit selection category unit is selected if trigger unit change it to dying hero if the dying hero is selected by player function u u o o owner of unit um, and change this to dying hero so if the dying hero is selected by owner of the dying hero equal equal to true and Actually, you might have to be careful if, um, I didn't think about this right until now, um, if other players have your hero selected, you'd want to deselect it for them, but, uh, so you might have to do this in a loop or do this for each player, from player one through whatever, how many you have in your map. Um, but that's just a note if you want to do that. I'm not going to do that. Um, it's not too big of a deal, uh, honestly. So where are we going to go? Unit selection, we want to clear unit selection. 